going on guys? Aeroblaze777 here. Last time I analyzed the Koopa Links trailer for Mario Kart 8 showed off at the Nintendo Direct and my mind nearly exploded trying to look for everything in the video. And I spent a good like four or five days on it. And when going back and watching the trailer I got so much stuff wrong and I missed so many things. And so this is a follow up to that video and I'm going to be showing you guys some more things that I missed and I'm going to be correcting some errors I made. So let's get right to it. Right off the bat I picked up something that I missed really easily last time. There are two signs in the corner, one saying Larry Lights, the other one having something to do with Roy and him wearing headphones. I can't really make out what the rest of it says. This track clearly belongs to some of the Koopa Links. But which one? Either Roy or Larry? Well, why not both? This seems to be a popular theory going on lately, and I'm supportive of it. I have another theory similar to this double track owner thing that we'll get into really later in the trailer, okay? Boy, do I have a lot of correcting to do about my statement regarding the wheelie. I noticed that in the trailer they only use it if they have a boost or a mushroom. In this case, Mario got a starting boost. And I also noticed that indoor drifting seems to be majorly nerfed in this game. That's why. Then there'd be no difference between bikes and carts, but maybe that's the goal to balance out the bikes. Market Wii, well, you might as well have changed the name to Mario Bike Wii. Bikes are so much better than carts that there was really no reason to use a cart. I think they're balancing the bikes now, so people just won't choose bikes, and has the option to choose either, since there's no real clear advantage anymore. It makes more sense as to why the wheelie and inward drifting are not as in the same form as they were in Mario Kart Wii. I used to be like, hey, I think it's going to be the same as Mario Kart Wii, but now I'm supportive of this new idea. I've pretty much confirmed that this track is TikTok Clock from Mario Kart DS. And boy, does it look so much better than it did in Mario Kart DS. Again, Wario does a wheelie with the mushroom, though. Indicating that wheelies can only be done when having a mushroom or a boost. Daisy's cart has a cat tail. Hmm, seem familiar? Here we see some panels on the road that say MKTV on it. MKTV, probably standing for Mario Kart TVs, I think is the little Miiverse thing announced at the Developer Direct at E3 where you could take replays, host, take replays and post them to Miiverse. And I think it's kind of cool how the game is acting like it's an actual thing now, instead of just being there in like the background. I just want to say it seems like everything this track is pumping to the music. Those stars, the stereo we saw at the beginning, and even this Mario Kart Disco Ball. Disco Ball. They seem to be all enjoying the party. There's another MKTV ad right there. After looking at this and hearing from hearing about this from a friend, you can see that the track pattern is actually a guitar neck with the little horizontal lines representing the frets and this applies to the green section and the purple section so we can with this we can clearly see that this track clearly has a musical theme to it on GBA Mario Circuit I noticed a little tiny glider ramp right behind those trees sneaky Nintendo also, I remember those things that are holding up the track, they're called carjacks, if anybody really cared. A little new detail on DK Jungle Track from Mario Kart 7, the banana inside the cave now rotates. Cool, I guess. Whoa, 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 look closely at what Mario is doing. He pulled a draft off of Waluigi. This confirms that drafting will return. And it will look more realistic in this game. Instead of having all those blue things, having the air look blue, now it looks like it look more realistic, like the card's actually like cutting through air and stuff. <laughs> Turns out those mechanical cheap cheeps I saw aren't really new to the Mario universe after all. 
They did appear in the first airship level stage on Super Mario Bros. U, the Mighty Cannon Ship. Well, to be fair, it is new to the Mario Kart world, at least. Another thing that I wanted to mention about this track that is that I've been debating its name for a long time. It could be called Subculture, but the fact that it makes is consisted of three rides, which consists of the roller coaster, the Wario wheel, and some carousel ride, makes it unlikely just to be named after one track. So I came up with three different possibilities. It's clear that with the sign for Waluigi Seabed and the W wheel that this track probably belongs to Wario or Waluigi, as seen by such signs. Or it could be named after another sign we saw in a recently released screenshot for Toad Harbor, a newly announced track. In this screenshot, there's a little panel for a place called Super Marine World. That, that could be a fitting title, to be honest, but honestly, it really doesn't have much to do with Wario or Waluigi at all. So, I'm, I'm really debating this so far. And plus, we can't always trust random signs on the middle of the road in Mario Kart. Most of the time, they don't even mean anything. We see that the racers clearly ride out from under the submarine, and not and the submarine is not riding on the same level that they are. This kind of botches my theory about the submarine being the obstacle, but maybe the submarine will like go above the track on some laps and like stay on the rail on some tracks. I think that would make for an interesting hazard, but for now, it doesn't look like that'll be so. Looks like some Shy Guys and Koopa Troopas are really rocking out to these tunes. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that this track may not be called Sub Coaster after all, but like we can see right there in the corner, there are signs for the name Sub Coaster everywhere. So again, I really have no idea what this track could possibly be called Sub Coaster, and well, I have no idea to be frank. Notice how Iggy took a shortcut through that carousel ride, and since he was going pretty fast, we can fairly assume that that will be an off-road section, and it's a little minor shortcut. There's a bullet bill sign now near the tunnel of the volcano entrance on Grumble Volcano for Mario Kart Wii, but I doubt it means anything. Like I said earlier, we always see these kind of random signs on the edges of the rails, on the edges of roads, and they hardly even mean anything. We see Morton Jr. here riding in the same cart, or three wheeler, that we saw Wario ride in on Bone Dry Dunes, a, a new track that was announced a while back. This, this indicates that Morton Jr. will be a part of the heavyweight class. <laughs> Notice there's a Luigi in the background that looks silver. Now that just means he has a star, but later on he'll go and hit that pendulum, and he sort of like bounces back. That probably means like... Well, the pendulum really isn't a big hazard, but it'll rather just stop you in your tracks. <laughs> Note that Yoshi's red shell that he was holding mysteriously disappears when he gets hit by one. Does that mean getting hit by anything will cause you to lose your item? I think not. Well, for one, that'd be rather cheap. And two, we saw Roy do a trick earlier and his shell disappeared as well. Probably meaning that in preset animations, your item will disappear from your character's hands. If we pause at the right time, we see there's a huge bridge way up at the waterfall, and that's going to be the main way to connect the two waterfalls. Now, while I was thinking about this, another question arose in my head. Will the waterfalls speed up or slow you down like Koopa Capes Mario Kart Wii? On that same track, the river will the river could speed you up since you're going with the current. I mean, think about it. Since you're riding up the waterfall, it would slow you down. That's why there are a bunch of boost panels running down it. And that's why there are no boost panels on the other side, if you think about it. I think that would be really cool to see back. I kind of like the water mechanics in Koopa Cape. And it makes sense, you know, given the boost panels and the no boost panels on the other side. So, it's really, it would be a really nice addition if you ask me. guarantee that this track is DS TikTok Clock and boy does it look so much better 
And did you notice that finish line is, is surrounded by a giant alarm clock? Kind of cool. I wonder if it'll like, start ringing as soon as the race starts. That'd be kind of funny. But just looking at it some more, I can probably tell that this track is Shy Guy Falls. Ignore Bowser's epic arm flailing for a second and hear me out a bit. Bowser gets hit by the fire and his mushroom seems to disappear out of his hands. Now there's two possibilities. One, that he could have used his mushroom before he ran into the fire and that's pretty stupid. I doubt that's a possibility. And two is that it just disappeared because it's a preset animation. More evidence supporting that items will disappear in preset animations. Bowser's arms! Bowser's arms! Bowser's arms! There's now a ring of coins that are added in the air right after the gliding section. At first I was like, why do they just disappear sometimes? But then I realized, wait, coins spin. Mm, wow. The rock on the far right is still there. It still holds the possibility that the rock hop shortcut from Global Volcano and Marco we could return. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a pretty big shortcut on Mario Kart Wii's Global Volcano. It was really good at Mario Kart Wii for those who didn't like glitching like myself. And it could be back, but I think Nintendo would nerf it a little considering it is a shortcut that was in a previous version. I don't see why they wouldn't nerf it in my opinion. I have a little more evidence supporting the dual owner theory about how Wario and Waluigi could own this amusement park track. For one, there are always two ghosts for every track in Time Trials, if you recall. There's a regular ghost, and there's a stat, and there's an expert ghost. Well, with that it would make sense if there's two owners, I have one owner being the regular ghost, I have one owner being the expert ghost. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but... You know, it's up to Nintendo if they put it in or not. On to the track itself. There's a banner on the right with the crown insignia, albeit a slightly different one from the Special Cup logo. But then again, what else could a crown really mean in Mario Kart? This way, we could infer that this track is part of the Special Cup. Also, notice that there's a trash can that says Water Park on the side. If you recall, there was an ad for the same track, Water Park, at Sunshine Airport. If the track's name is Water Park, one, that would be a pretty lame name. But also, since Koopa Troopa was on that ad, that could mean that Koopa Troopa could be the owner of this track as well. But then again, there's a water wheel and, uh, you know what, this track's just so confusing, it's best not to delve too deep into it. Or else my mind might permanently, permanently explode. All I can say is that we'll just have to wait three more months for who the real owner of this track is. Also note on the Wario wheel, there are other carriages on the tr on the Ferris wheel itself that are blue and red resembling Mario. Cool. Also, I noticed some Nokis from Super Mario Sunshine cheering you on on this track. Cool. They're back. There's a boat right there that says Mario Kart right on it. And if we skip ahead a couple frames, we can actually see that there's another boat that says Yoshi, and there's one other that says Wario. And well, over, off in the distance, I can't really tell what that says, but it does have the Mario logo on it. Yeah. See right here, if we see that Mario is on a bike, yet he managed to pull off a Super Draft, which is basically the Red Draft, and that'll give you a higher boost once you release the Mini Turbo. And if you pair that with Inward Drifting Nows in Mario Kart Wii, that would be way too OP. And plus in this scene where Mario is drifting, the, he doesn't seem to be drifting too close inward. So it does support that inward drifting will be nerfed. And in return, that you will get the whole orange turbo boost. There's a piranha plant off to the left that I just totally missed the first time. And I guess he was just blending it with the color so well that I didn't really pay much attention to him. But notice how he doesn't seem to eat any of the players. Kind of odd though. A split second after the piranha plant goes out of view, we can see that the area around it seems to just light up in a blue color. What this means, I have no idea. But maybe the piranha plant will attack to the music. And whenever the blue light pounds, it kind of indicates whenever it's going to attack. It makes sense, but, you know, I really don't know. 
If we look back closely, we can see the piranha player in the background just changes from purple to cyan, and he starts changing to green before the camera fades out. Maybe it's just a little aesthetic touch that he'll change colors every so often. So that is going to wrap up this week's analysis. Thank you guys so much for watching. I just want to mention that I did not find this all on my own. I did have to look at some other sources. And I just wanted to compile it just so you guys would have a good update on Mario Kart 8. Just so you know, the screenshot analysis is taking a while. But I'm pretty sure it'll be up before May 30th at the least, alright? So with that, with that out of the way, I've been Aeroblaze777 and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.